hello welcome back to my channel if you are not new here but if you are new here welcome so if you don't know the month of may is asian pacific or an island wait asian american and pacific islander heritage month a few folks here on youtube are hosting an asian readathon for the month of may and one of the books that i wanted to read is kira kira by cynthia Kalahata. now i don't remember how long i've had this copy but it's obviously an old one. I talked a little bit about this book in my Age and Readathon TBR, but I'm just gonna make a whole reading vlog about this book um, because it's been a really long time since I've last read it. So here's the story. Oh, sixth grade was the time where I really started to get into reading, um, mainly for competitive reasons. So in the sixth grade, I really branched out and read a lot of different types of books to really try and find out what I liked. Um, I don't remember how I came across this book at all. I don't remember much about the story or the characters or anything because the last time I read this was in like the sixth, seventh grade and now I'm a sophomore in college. So with that said, I want to spend this reading vlog rereading a childhood favorite to see if this is still a favorite book of mine. I was the target audience for this book when I was in the sixth grade. I'm no longer the target audience, but I just remember that this is a book about a girl who is Japanese American and she lives in the South. I am also Japanese American and I live in the South. Um, so that is one of the uh, book challenges for the Asian Readathon is to read a book that you relate to, whether for the characters or the author. And this is my book. I decided that I'm going to be annotating this book. I have this post-it note here. So anything in pink tabs are relatable moments, meaning if there's something that I relate to with the characters or a thought that they've had or anything like that, I'll mark it as pink. So anything in orange um, is labeled characters and that translates to any time I notice there's a significant moment in a character's development or something big happened to a character, just anything related to characters. And then green is quotes. I don't, like I said, I don't remember much about this book, but there's probably some good quotes in here that I want to keep track of and I'm going to mark that in green. Oh, also the thing that like shocked me, I opened this up and it is stamped with the name of my school and my school's address in Hawaii. Like I, this is actually from my school. Um, when I was in the fifth and sixth grade, I spent a lot of time in the school library helping out my librarian. And every um, few weeks or so she would go through and take down old books and I remember coming home with so many books because the librarian was just going to donate them or toss them out and I was like I'm gonna take these home that is when I took home a lot of babysitters clubs book and I'm pretty sure this is one of them I lost the dust jacket a long time ago but this is it Cynthia Kanahata Kira Kira this book is 244 pages I should finish this in one read if I'm being honest. I'm gonna get started with this and read what I can with whatever sunlight I can get. So I'm gonna get started. All right, I have made myself comfortable. I, there's a mosquito outside my window. And also I don't actually reread books that very often. Um, last time I read this was in the sixth or seventh grade and yeah. Okay, so I'm already only on the second page, but I'm noticing that I guess the last time I read this book, I annotated it in pencil. Um, but I guess only on the second page because I don't see much anywhere else. I think that's weird. So I totally forgot that this story takes place in the 50s and the 60s. So of course there are moments in which the family and the characters um, experience racism. And I think this is the, char the main character's first time ever experiencing prejudice in any sort of way and so very quickly I realized I really needed to add a note a new tab for um what the hell moments these blue tabs here are every moment in which I go what the hell or I go hmm interesting <laughs> it's 1 a.m and I just finished Kira Kira these are all my tabs that I have I I'm going to save my thoughts for the morning. I'm going to sleep on it and then talk about it tomorrow. All right. I have my ice mocha. I have my book. And now I have all of my thoughts written out. Oh, you can see my pile of trash. I'll sit on this side so you can't really see it. It is the next morning. Um, I slept on my thoughts and I woke up and immediately like started typing things down. But... 
This first part, I'm going to talk a little bit about the book in a non-spoiler fashion, but then I'm just going to go right into it. Long story short, I gave this book a five out of five stars. My immediate reaction after reading this book is that it was well written for the targeted audience. It remained very emotional for me just like how I remembered it and I believe that the writing matched up with Katie and her age and I'll explain a little bit more about that later. I don't really know if I went into it earlier but I'm just going to remind you all about what this book is about. Katie Takashima, her and her family live in 1950s Iowa but then they have to move to Georgia because Katie's parents get a new job um, working in a hatchery and they end up living in a Japanese community in the deep south of Georgia. Katie being the younger sister she is absolutely loves her older sister Lynn. She looks up to her and does everything that she does. Kira Kira is Japanese for glittery or shiny and Lynn was really good at finding the beauty in very simple things. So Katie and her family lived in Georgia in a time where things were still black and white or colored and white and Lynn was the first one that taught Katie why some people would be treating her differently and why some people would be treating her parents differently just because they're Japanese. Then ends up falling really, really sick and that changes their whole family dynamic. And I think you can really see the burden that it takes on Katie um, and what that means for Katie in terms of her character development and her trying to keep her family together. So for the Asian Readathon, I had to read a book in which I related to the author or the character in some way. And I definitely related to a lot of moments and to some of the characters. I need to add a blue tab and just put what the hell moments, um, either what the hell moments or significant moments. Um, so we're going to go and look through our pink tab here. If you don't ever plan on reading this, then you can just watch this through and just sit back, relax, drink some iced mocha coffee. Anyway, I'm just going to get on into it and tell you all about my experience rereading a childhood favorite. Let's go to the first pink moment that I tabbed. Oh, we were poor, but in the way Japanese are poor, meaning we never borrowed money from anyone. Period. It literally says period. All of the fathers work at a hatchery in the nearby town. So one awesome thing about this book um, and what the author did really well is writing about the sense of community in here, both family and with friends. The book is proof that it takes a village to raise a child. And that is very much what had happened in this book. So next tab, we have the conversation between Lynn and Katie where Lynn tells her that uh, some people are pretty freaking racist and don't like people who are other than white. This was right before Katie started school. Lynn pulled her aside to have a conversation. You mean because they don't know me? No, I mean because they don't want to know you. Why wouldn't they want to know me? Who, wanna, who wouldn't want to know me? This was a new idea for me. Our father had always thought that we were quite amazing. And Lynn, of course, had always thought I was perfect. So I thought of myself as perfect rather than amazing, maybe even perfect. That was a run on sentence. Because there's only 31 Japanese people in the whole town and there's more than 4,000 people in the whole town. And 4,000 divided by 31 is a lot more than us. Do you understand? No. I think the way Lynn carried out that conversation with Katie um, would have been better than anything that I probably would have said to my sister. Oh, the next one. Do you agree with me all the time just because I say so or because you really truly agree with me? I didn't see the difference between the two things, so I just said I didn't know. <laughs> Y'all, this reminds me. There's this, I don't remember what video or what special or what episode, but Hasan Minaj, great comedian, awesome show called Patriot Act on Netflix. You should all go and watch it. But he answered a question that goes along the lines of younger siblings do not have a personality. And this, this, this backs that up. Um, and I am the oldest child in this family. So I totally understand what Lynn means where she's like, do you actually understand? Do you actually agree with me? Or like, are you thinking for yourself? Like sometimes I catch myself telling my sister, you need to think about yourself before you think what I want, you know? And then the last one is watching the first sunrise is a traditional way to celebrate New Year's in Japan. And this like struck a chord in my heart because this year when it turned 2020, my family and I woke up really early and we went to the beach and watched the first sunrise of the year. So it, it is a true Japanese tradition and it's one that is believed to bring good luck to the family. Um, so just reading about that, um, yeah, made me feel very emotional. Next we have characters. So I have a quite a few orange tabs for this, but there's one character in particular that I want to talk about. And that is the uncle. Uncle was such an important character 
but I didn't realize that early on. But there's a chapter where um, the mom and Lynn has to go to the hospital. And so Katie's uncle comes by with his family to watch Katie for the day. Her uncle, for some reason, I don't know why, was just so impatient with Katie. I started growing a lot of appreciation for the uncle in the story and his role in Katie and Lynn's lives. Because um, we met him from the very beginning. He helped them move from Iowa all the way to Georgia. Um, him and his family would like hang out with Katie and them all the time and then he took a big part in Katie's grieving process as well later in the book. There was this one scene where he was just such an asshole to Katie and I didn't I did not like him in that moment but it took that moment for me to realize oh he is truly a significant character to Katie and then later on he revealed that um his first child that him and his wife had um, died shortly after birth. So there's a part where the entire Japanese community is together and the uncle is just talking to them and he says something about how Katie and Lynn are going to grow up to be farm kids. Farm kids understood the meaning of death. They understood how death was a part of life. When he said that, my mother and Auntie Fumi frowned at him. After I read the book and then I reflected back on this quote, I wonder if that was meant to foreshadow Katie and her grieving process in the future but in the end I think Katie and her family had different ways of grieving and understanding Katie's death and so I think this really was part of like the foreshadowing of that understanding. This part gives me chills every time I read it but on the 49th day after Lynn's death I opened all the windows in the alcove even though it was raining. I closed my eyes and tried to feel Lynn's spirit. A leaf suddenly fell off the magnolia tree and flew into the wind and hit the screen right in front of me. I believe the leaf was a sign from Lynn. <sighs> okay, so earlier I mentioned that the writing very much matched Katie as she was growing up. This is the best example that I can provide. I just like to listen to Lynn and talk to Barra Barra to eat rice candies. The lady who used to live down the street could take all of her top teeth out of her mouth. She wasn't allowed to chew candy. I could eat any candy I wanted because I still had my baby teeth. If they rotted, I would simply grow more teeth. That was pretty great. <laughs> Some of that didn't really matter, but that was a great representation of Katie's very young mind. But then later we have, then later we have paragraphs like Lynn wanted her life. I thought she was willing to suffer if she could still taste her food, if she could still talk about the sea, if she could still feel the breeze across her face, even if she could still argue with her crazy sister. And then we have other moments like sometimes no matter how hard I tried, I got a C. That happened a lot. But when I worked hard, I got better grades. This surprised me. I guess because Lynn was so smart and it had seemed easy for her to get good grades I never noticed how hard she worked I thought getting an A was something that happened to you not something you made happen but after Lynn had died and I spent a lot of time thinking about her I remembered how often I'd see her sitting at her desk chewing her pencil as she worked for hours on her homework we went from one stream of consciousness that was just very random and childlike into one that is very organized and cohesive and really shows the character um, growth that Katie has gone through. Also, I found the moment that was very significant between the uncle and Katie where they talk about, um, where they talk about the death of Katie and the death of the uncle's first child. I just wanted you to know I understand. Lenny didn't hate you. You didn't hate Lenny. You were mad because she was so sick. There was one day when my son was so sick in such pain, I thought I should just smother him with a pillow to take him out of misery. But that's horrible. Of course it is. I didn't do it. I would never do it. When someone is dying, you have crazy thoughts. Don't feel guilty. You're too young for that. That is proof that the uncle has been significant from the beginning. He was the one that was like, farm kids understand death. And now he's here explaining to Katie why it is okay to feel this way during the grieving process after someone important to you has died. Now, I do have these big post-it notes here. This one says, how old is Katie and does Katie still not know about the cancer that ev does everyone else know? Because it wasn't until later in the book where we found out Lynn has lymphoma, not just anemia. I think there was so much build up to the moment Katie died and then everything after that happened very, very quickly. That was the one thing that I was, wasn't was too much of a fan about um, for this book. But other than that, this will forever stay on my bookshelf and I'm so glad this came from my elementary school where I first read it. It was just so nice getting to reread a childhood favorite and to remind myself why I love this book in the first place. As an adult, of course, it's kind of weird to me now to read young adult fiction or middle grade fiction and just try and read stories that weren't 
made for me it's it's still very nice to get to relive that kind of mindset you know especially in a time like now and i give this book a five out of five stars if you just want something really really easy for this asian readathon you can definitely pick this up this is a little bit more emotional so if you're not looking for that then don't pick it up this book and the book Cracker, The Best Dog in Vietnam are my favorite books of hers. And they're the only two books that I've read of hers. So I think I'm going to go and pick up more of her other books in the future after the readathon, after I get to my TBR pile. But that was my reaction to rereading A Childhood Favorite. And this is the first book that I completed for this Asian readathon. Just let me know in the comments or DM me if you've ever read this book or if you ever plan on reading so I can just like keep track and see how you're doing. I hope you all enjoyed this video if you did please give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe i have more bookish content coming your way let me know in the comments down below if you've ever reread a childhood favorite recently and how you enjoyed or did not enjoy that experience other than that i hope you all have a great day bye everyone